Hi and welcome to Fishing Western Australia's first video in our Series 1 collection. We've got some amazing fishing and some great tips to show you over the next hour. So what are we waiting for? Let's get right into it. So Steve, this is Broome. This is Broome, mate. It's a famous pearling town in the northwest, and uh, it's been a pearling town for over 100 years and it still is today, but that's not what we're here for. So we're here for the fishing? We're here for the fishing, mate. How about the trees? That tells us we're at the gateway to the Kimberley. That's called a boab tree. Yep. And uh, they are the most amazing tree you'll ever see. Absolutely. So the trees are amazing. Are the fish amazing? The fish are unbelievable. A friend of mine, Chris, runs a charter up here. He's going to take us out looking for mackerel tuna, which uh, they're going to blow you away, mate. So on the fly rod, it's going to be good? Well, on the fly rod, I don't know how you're going to go. <laughs> but so look, you can try the fly. I'm going to go with the spinning gear, I think. I haven't got the guts to put the fly rod in after well, these things. I'll try anything once. All right. All right, mate. Let's go. Let's go get some fish. Okay. Now this is the burley we're going to use. Basically it's fish. If a good chef saw this and he was going to put it in some soup, it probably cost about $80. All right, but they're just going to throw it in the big pond, in the big bowl of soup. Let's see if we can get some fish in that one. Now we've just spotted some birds working. Now the only birds I've ever seen working are in bars in England. But uh, they work quite a lot on the ocean over here. So why, what, that, what does that mean? Oh, they're probably chasing uh, mac tuna or long tail tuna which are further on the smaller white bait that are down there. And they usually travel in schools together, in a mingle. Sure enough, if there was a weird fish anywhere in the area, Marshy would find it. A remora on fly. Just stick an onion in his guts, I'm gonna wrap him up in hell for him, mate. Ooh, beautiful. <laughs> can you touch them? Yeah. Can you touch them? Yeah, you can touch them, mate. Just watch those suckers, I'll... I'll stuck on the air, mate, and I'll suck all the blood out of you. Oh, yeah, great. You guts in about three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, cool, if they get bigger than that up here. As much fun as a remora is, a school of mackerel tuna was working nearby and soon got our attention, so Marshy wanted one of those on the fly rod. There's the tuna. This is the fly. Let's get one. As mac tuna rarely turn when feeding, you have to put a fly or lure right into their path. This goes, it's gonna go off. It's gonna be like tying it onto the back of your car. It's on, it's on! on. Yeah. Oh yeah, Marshy. Hi. It's between me and him now, I've got I've got a bit of fly line and I'm trying to keep it on the reel. Now you can see I'm putting my rod in the water because he's just there and if I don't, it will snap. And there goes my fly line now. Okay, he's on the backing now. I've got two, three colours of backing. That'll tell me I've got 350 yards. That'll tell me if he takes all the orange, I'm all right. If he takes the yellow, I'm all right. If he takes the white, I start to panic because I ain't got much left. Now with a fish like this, try to get back some fly line, if you can. Now this is gonna hurt tomorrow. Now this is when you hope that you've done all the preparation and all your knots are good, especially on the backing, because when you've got $150 with a fly line in the water and just a bit of string holding the back of it, it gets a bit worrying. Now, with your fly rod, for trout, we tend to keep it like this, pretty high, because it's not that much of a deep water situation, but with this, keep the rod nice in the stomach and just hold on. Because he wants more of the orange stuff. Okay. Oh, this is just amazing. It's so heavy. It really is. This will be the biggest fish I've caught on fly, for sure. Yeah. Here's my fly line coming back. Come on. Here it comes. Yeah. Now, if I got fly line back, that means I've only got 30 yards to go. And there it is on the reel. A couple of turns, that's fine. Sweet, cool fishing bloke. Beautiful, mate. Let's get his brother. No, he's gone. 
he's going. Now, just so I can get some fly line back on the rod. Please. Now, I'll come up to the pointy end <laughs> because he's just took off again. This sort of... Oh, is it? <laughs> See, I'm obviously, uh, I'm obviously a boat person. After a battle that tired both man and fish, Ian was finally getting the upper hand and walked to the back of the boat for Bruce to land the tuna. You can see the distinctive stripes of the mackerel tuna that run along the top of their body. These fish are the predominant tuna species of the north of Western Australia, but are poor eating, so should be returned. Okay, that's just like a smelt pattern. Just dead simple tie, bit of white, bit of blue and a bit of flash. He loved that. Now I'm gonna let this one go. Go and tell all your mates. Hopefully we'll get some big ones. Now this is fly fishing in the Kimberleys. I've never done anything like this in my life before. Trout don't run that hard. I don't care how big they are. This is fantastic. Thanks, mate. Appreciate right, that. Well done, mate. Thanks, mate. He's got a lot of patience. This is Samara 3 in the Kimberleys. Fantastic. Taylor are a magnificent fish, and the beaches of Mandra, south of Perth, have schools running almost 12 months of the year. It had been a while since I've been here, but luckily I was with Bruce Redding from Gone Fishing Beach Safaris, who fishes this area at least twice a week. Well, Bruce, it's Taylor time. Why don't you show everyone the rig that you like to use? Right, I use three, three O hooks ganged together, nice little length of line, the trace slightly heavier than your main line, because we use, we're catching Taylor here, they've got big teeth. And they bite you off, right? They bite it off really quick. And I run a semi-running sinker. Only short line, just gives you that better feel when they first touch it. Because your sinker's going to be buried in the sand, and so you just want that little bit of play there to strike and set the hooks when the fish bites, yeah? That's right, Steve, yeah. That'll bury, but you're still nice and free to move. Well, that's an excellent idea. All right, why don't you show everyone how you bait a muley up? No problem. It's quite easy. All you do is you lay your muley across your four fingers, just lay your hooks so like so. You can see where your three hooks are gonna go, your start point. Just get your muley straight in, straight through. Go to your next hook, straight through. And then the last hook comes up into the gill area, the eye, or in the beak of the fish. All right, mate, let's do it. The sea breeze was just starting to waft in. And although it was only two in the afternoon, that usually signals the start of the tailor bite, which can last until dark. You only need to cast just past the breakers most days to find the fish. That's because tailor normally feed on the small whiting that live in the gutters. Bruce was using his trusty Australian made alvey reel, but I prefer lighter spinning gear with braided line for extra casting distance. Like most fishing, it's probably best for you to use what you feel most comfortable with. I also like the braided line because I can feel every touch and it wasn't long before I had the first hit for the day. Oh, well, what's this? It's a tailor! Hey! Is our first one for the day? There you go, mate. First one for the day, and we only just got him. Oh, you're yeah, very oh, oh. Lip, That's what you call lip. And look at those razor sharp teeth Don't around put there. Your finger in there. No, I'm not going to put my finger in there. Whoa, yeah, snapped it shut on me. Yeah, look at that, Steve. You're using a 5 0 hook there. He could easily swallow a bigger hook than that, couldn't he? That's right. No, I'm only using a 3 0 hook. See these needle sharp teeth here, and that's why they call them Taylor. They will easily go through your finger right to the bone. Now he's a bit small, over legal length. He's over legal length. But yep. uh, not too much meat on these. You can see how thin they are across the back. So we're going to put him back to grow a bit, and I'm sure there's bigger ones out there. But good start to the day. Good one. Got a nice little rip running just out here on my left hand side. 
and it goes probably goes out for about 50 metres. So I'm going to cast and I'm going to drop it right alongside the edge of the dirty water. And there's a slight gutter running through there as well. So just on the end of the rip and out into the nice clean water. And then I'll slowly retrieve back and see if we can get another one. And with a bit of luck you'll attack it either in the gutter or just as we come up the other side of the gutter. And he did. And he seems a bit better than that other one. Oh, you haven't got another one, have you? Well, it's a little bit better than the other one. There he jumps. Now, are you sure that's not weed? No, uh, definitely not weed, <laughs> What's Steve? happened down that oh, way? Why, yeah, mate, why? You're going to keep the line tight, mate. You lose them. Oh, that's a beauty, mate. That's a ripper. Yeah. That'd be about a kilo, I reckon. Yeah. Nice little fish, that one. There you go, mate. I reckon I'll, I'll give that one to you. You give me that one? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. No, I should fit that on. Yeah, I'll give that a more. try. I'll give, give that a try. try. You're give the master. Try. When in Rome, I think I'll take your advice. Yeah, well, you're down in my office now, that's, so... Uh... That's not a bad office either, is it, eh? Have a look at that. <laughs> right. That's the best view in town. <laughs> The bag limit for Taylor in Western Australia is only eight per person per day, but one or two large fish is a meal for any family. Our Taylor stocks are only just starting to improve again due to better management of this popular species. So fishing for the future means we'll have this wonderful opportunity to fish great beaches like White Hills for many years to come. Ian's had me catching trout all morning, sitting in a dam in the pouring rain. We caught some trout, we weren't allowed to keep any, so it's my task now to get us some dinner. I promised the guy back at the motel we'd catch some redfin perch. Now, they're a bit of a pest in the Warren River, in Manjumup, which is where we are, and uh, if you catch one, you're not allowed to put them back. You have to take them with you. Luckily, they taste great, so let's go catch us some dinner, eh? A canoe is the ideal way to get around these rivers because it's quiet, easy to put into the snags where the redfin live, and it works off a bit of that winter fat that seems to build up more and more each year. Now, I've just stopped here in the snags to tie my lure. What I'm going to use is one of these bass spinnerbaits. They're very popular in the States, starting to do a real big business over here on redfin. They use this little spinner which spins around, as spinners do, or good spinners anyway. The hook is on this small jig-like creation. It spins through the water like that, puts a bit of pressure on. The flash attracts, they grab the fish, bingo, one red fin, we hope. Let's see we go. Remember to put your lure right into the snags and branches because this gives you the best chance of finding a fish. Your retrieve can be quite slow, so the blade of the lure just spins. It may be that you don't find fish straight away, so be prepared to shoulder arms and move along the river until you do. Chances are, if there's one in a snag, there'll be more. I decided to change tactics a little and work the lure across a big snag that had fallen into the middle of the river. This proved to be just where the fish were hiding, and a redfin immediately grabbed the lure. These aren't hard fighting fish, but you should keep your rod nice and high to keep them away from the snags early on in the fight. Once you get them to the surface, they're usually beaten. Oh, actually it's not a bad one. Not a bad one at all. There we go. Dorsal fin raised like that. And that's dinner. Beautiful. Our two kilo line, you get the lure, up he comes. Lovely. How's that, eh? Caught on one of these bass baits. Starting to make a bigger splash in Australia now. Now, what you've got to remember with redfin is you can't put them back. Luckily, they taste fantastic, but 
They were introduced here and they were a pest. So feel good about yourself. Not only have you got a great dinner, but you're doing WA a favour by taking it home, having a great meal. When you're in the north of Western Australia, there's so many choices and places to explore. Today, I thought I'd take Marshy to a deserted island in the middle of nowhere to have a fish off the beach like he'd never done before. Leaving Bruce to fish in one of the bays, we came across a sand spit that was thick with silver flashes that just had to be queenfish. Ian, as usual, brought his fly rod and the deadly blue and white clouds of fly, while I cast around a small blue and white laser slice. As so often happens in the north, the lure got chased immediately and I was onto a fish with the first cast. My hooked fish coming in close to shore would be followed by many others which came close enough for Ian to put a fly in front of. Needless to say, they were only too happy to eat that as well. These queenies travel in schools that can cover acres of water when they're small and are constantly competing with each other for food. So anything you put in front of them is chased by 10 or 20 fish before the powerful strike. Now you can see with queenies, they really don't have a lot of teeth. They're not going to hurt you there. What well, they are going to hurt you with is these Keltrop spikes at the top of their back. That really hurts and I've got about 18 puncture wounds already. Now there's also these two here under the anal fin and they're just as sharp. They're not really poisonous but oh boy, they certainly hurt. Over the last two days my hands have taken a pounding. With a couple of queenies under our belt, we decided to try dragging along the bottom to see if anything else was lurking down there that might bite even harder. You don't need to work your lure very fast, and a couple of twitches in the sand was all it took for something to have a big go at mine. This fish certainly felt stronger, and while I fought with a nice pocket-sized giant trevally, Marshy was wondering why he didn't bring a stripping basket. What's this? Behind me, schools of queenfish are going absolutely crazy. But if you let it sink down a bit further, there's these little Kilo GTs. Giant Trevally, and boy are they fun. I'm gonna get him back. Now I got the fly rod out to have a few casts, but unfortunately, all the fish went off the boil because they're a little bit far out, a little bit out of fly casting distance. So now I've got the metal lure back on to bring them back in closer for Ian. Hopefully you'll do the same for me later. You're still here. Cool. Well, you don't get this sort of opportunity very often. So when you do, just go hard and make the most of it. Queenfish are very similar to another great predator, the tailor. They fight the same, feed the same way, and they even taste similar. But you certainly don't get schools of tailor like this in the city very often. That's what made this day something we'll always remember.